All right, so in physics, we spend a lot of time taking mathematical laws and trying to do some sort of experiment to see if they're true. And one of the most important parts of any experiment, if not the most important part, is getting good measurements. If you don't have good measurements, you don't have good data, you can't get good results. But getting good measurements is where we find a very big problem in any experiment. And the problem is that no measurement is perfectly accurate. Even the best technology we have can't give us a perfect measurement. Now, the reason why we may not be able to get a perfect measurement is because the equipment might have some limitation or maybe we make a mistake ourselves. For example, I might try to measure this pencil here. And if I were to measure this pencil, I could probably only measure it to the millimeter. And the main reason being is because my eyes probably can't see anything closer than millimeters. But I might be able to put this pencil in some sort of highly technical device that measures with lasers or something like that. And it might be able to measure down to the picometer. But even then, that's not perfect. There's still some uncertainty in the measurement of this pencil. Now, I could limit the errors that I make whenever I'm making measurements by maybe taking a lot of measurements and putting the average of all those measurements together, and that can help mitigate some of my errors, but it still doesn't mean I have a perfect measurement. So you understand that it's impossible to get a perfect measurement, but let's talk about a little experiment that maybe you might run into where you're trying to measure the velocity of something. So you might remember that a velocity is measured by a length divided by a time. And let's say we did this experiment and we found that the length that this object traveled was 10.25 meters and it traveled that distance in a time of 5.2 seconds. So if you were to plug 10.25 divided by 5.2, you get this answer of 1.9711538 meters per second. Now, here's where the problem comes in, is we can't say that our answer is actually that accurate right there. The reason being is we measure time only to one decimal spot, and we measure the length to two decimal spots. So how can we have something with like seven decimal spots in our answer and say that that is accurate? especially if neither one of our measurements were that accurate. And this right here is where the idea of significant figures comes into play. Now, I'm going to come back to this problem in a second, but I want to teach you a little bit about significant figures first. Now, the definition of a significant figure is the number of digits within a number that you can reliably know. So let's say I have the number 101. 101 is the whole number but this one, this zero, and this other one, those are all digits within the number. So significant figures is all about how many digits are within a number and how many of those digits within the number can you reliably know. And a quick rule of thumb that's very helpful in finding out how many digits are reliably known is to write numbers in scientific notation. So the proper way to write numbers in scientific notation is to have some number with the decimal spot and then however many numbers are needed after the decimal spot times 10 to the n and that n represents how big or small the number is so this is how you write scientific notation so let's do a few example problems here let's start off with the number 101 and we want to figure out how many significant figures this has well, we want to write the number in scientific notation. So if I were to move my decimal one, two spots to the left, we have 1.01 times 10 to the second. And what we would do is we would look at this and say, okay, we have one, two, three digits inside the number that we can reliably know. So what does that mean? It means we have three significant figures or sig figs. Now let's look at the number 1001. We're going to put that in scientific notation, and then we're going to see how many significant figures it has. So you move your decimal one, two, three spots to the left. You got 1.001 times 10 to the third. So that means we have one, two, three, four significant figures. So four sig figs. Now let's do numbers that are kind of small, like 0 0.1. 
How many significant figures does that have? Well, we need to move our decimal one spot to the right this time. So that gives us the number of one times 10 to the negative one. Well, when we look at that, there's only one significant figure. So we'll say one sig fig. Now let's try the number 0 0.1001. Okay, so what is the proper number of significant figures here? Well, we move our decimal one spot to the right. So we have 1.001 times 10 to the negative one, which means we have one, two, three, four significant figures. Now let's try a little more complicated one. Let's try 0 0.001001. So let's move our decimal spot one, two, three spots to the right. So we have 1.001 times 10 to the negative third, which means we have one, two, three, four significant figures in this one. So we have four sig figs. Now I wanna talk about a few special cases when it comes to significant figures. And this is probably gonna show you why significant figures are so important. Let's say I had the number 100. And I'm doing some sort of scientific experiment, and I report the number of some measurement to be 100 exactly. Well, I could do the exact same thing I just did before, move my decimal one, two spots over to the left, and say it is one times 10 to the second. And that shows that I only have one significant figure. So we'll say one sig fig. But that says that I'm only able to measure with an accuracy of 100s. But what if the situation showed up where I can measure more accurately than that, but my number actually just turned out to be 100? For example, I could write it as 1.0 times 10 to the second, and that shows I have two sig figs, and that also might show how accurate I was able to measure. Or I could even write it as 1.00 times 10 to the second, which is now three sig figs. So this shows why writing numbers in significant figures can be extremely helpful. Because if I'm given the number 100, I don't know if that is only one significant figure and you were only able to measure with the accuracy of hundreds, or were you actually able to measure all the way down to that last zero and you just didn't report it. So if someone were to report a number of one times 10 to the second, I know that they were only able to measure to an accuracy of just one digit. But if they were to write it either one of these two ways, I can see how accurate they were able to measure just by looking at how they wrote their number in scientific notation. So let's go back to that example that I started this entire presentation with, with our velocity and trying to figure out the proper number of significant figures that you can report. Now, when you're dividing or multiplying numbers, there's a specific rule you need to follow when you're reporting your answer. And significant figures is the basis of how you report your number when you're multiplying or dividing some sort of measurement. And that rule is whichever measurement you took that had the least amount of significant figures, your answer must have that same amount of significant figures. So in this example here are Length had four significant figures, but our time only had two significant figures. So our answer can only be reported with two significant figures. So that means that we can only report these two digits within our answer. This is actually a little bit of a special case, which is why I brought it up, is because this seven over here means we need to round up. So our answer with the proper number of significant figures would be two meters per second. And that answer shows how accurate we were able to measure everything. And it shows that this is how accurate we can be in reporting our numbers. We're gonna say it's two meters per second. And every measurement that we get, we know that there's some error to it. There's a little bit of error, but we're giving you an idea of how accurate that number is. Now, if you're adding or subtracting two numbers, you actually have a different rule for reporting your answer. You're actually not going to worry about significant figures anymore when it comes down to just purely adding or subtracting numbers. In fact, adding and subtracting numbers is easier than multiplying and dividing because you don't have to count significant figures. 
all you're going to be counting is the number of decimal places. So when adding or subtracting numbers, the measurement you took with the least number of decimal places is going to be the same number of decimal places your answer has. So for example, if I were to do a addition of two links, and let's say one of them was 501.234 meters, and I was to add 654.32 meters. Now I'm not gonna worry about the scientific notation in these two numbers because we're just adding them and it doesn't matter. Scientific notation is not important here. All we're gonna do is look at the number of decimal places that we have. So over here, 501.234, that's three decimal places, and 654.32, that's two decimal places. If you were to just plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 1,155.557 meters. And you can see that that has three decimal places. But we can't report a number that accurate because one of our measurements was only able to go to two decimal places. So the appropriate answer for this situation would be 1,155.5, and then we're going to round up to six meters. So in review on everything that we learned, we learned that all measurements have some sort of error in them, and we cannot report an answer that is more accurate than any of the measurements that we took during the experiment. It just doesn't make sense to give an answer that is more accurate than something that we were able to measure. Another thing that we learned is that when you are multiplying or dividing numbers, your answer will have the same amount of significant figures as the measurement with the least amount of significant figures. You might wanna write that down if you're taking notes. And also, when adding or subtracting measurements, you can only report an answer that has the same amount of decimal places as the measurements with the least amount of decimal places. So now you have a pretty good understanding of significant figures, you have a good understanding of how to report your answers. And in a previous video, I talked about SI units and how we have all sorts of different ways to make measurements. And in the real world, we're actually gonna to have to be able to convert between different types of measurements. So in the next video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to convert between different types of measurements using the metric system and also using imperial systems. So stick around for that.